A health check is designed to help us make better decisions and potentially live longer. Yet in the past, seeing the doc has affected my ability to get both life insurance and even have surgery. But I still had a health check last week and I will share the stats with you in this video. Even though one of them, BMI, body mass index, does more harm than good. And while I may, okay, probably, will bitch about BMI and other stuff, the check did show up my first serious health scare. And I'll share that too. 15 years ago, I went to see the doctor over a non-urgent issue. I told him my symptoms and he said, have you been on the internet? I said, no. He said, that's very refreshing. And we both burst out laughing. I said that I would never confuse my five minutes on the internet with his five years at med school. But 15 years later, I still not spent any time in med school, but I do have my new BFF, best friend forever, chat GPT. So please do two things as I go through my health check results. Take everything I say as someone who is a layman who has got pretty much no idea what he's talking about. Second, roast me hard with any knowledge you have. I am always open to respectful debate and learning because learning is my favorite thing to do, which is why I have started a weight loss community on school. It's called Lose 50 Over 50, and it's for men like me who are over 50 and want to shed 50 pounds or more in body weight. On school, we go deeper than I can on here. I'm in there every day, sharing my weight, what I'm eating, and the daily highs and lows of this difficult and pretty lonely journey of trying to lose what is a pretty significant amount of weight. I want other men to come in and be part of a community where we all support each other with our experiences, advice, and help. Fancy having a look? Click on the school link in my description. It's free, so you've got book all to lose. So, off I trotted last week to get a health check done on our UK National Health Service. When the results came back, there were just four things on it. One, my blood pressure. When it comes to controversy in the medical field, blood pressure is pretty low on the list if it's even on there at all. We know we need to keep it at the Goldilocks level. Not too high, not too low. Mine was quite a bit higher when I started my transformation journey three months ago, but it's now perfect. Next up, cholesterol. Ooh, this is now getting into spicy territory. Traditionally, LDL, lower density lipoprotein, is considered bad cholesterol, and HDL, high density, considered good. Skeptics say that cholesterol is just one marker among many, and that there should be a wider focus on insulin resistance, inflammation, metabolic health. The controversy isn't around whether LDL can contribute to heart disease, as most scientists agree it can. It's simply whether stating that everybody needs to lower it might be a bit of overkill. But this little dieting bunny is still very happy with my cholesterol as it's only 4.4. Less than five is considered ideal. Above that is considered high. But it gets even better than that. Only looking at total cholesterol can be misleading because it's like looking at someone's weight without also considering their height. So in comes the nose of its cousin, cholesterol ratio. Our cholesterol ratio is our total cholesterol divided by HDL, the good shit. Again, less than five is considered ideal. Above five is high. Mine is 3.7. Happy days. The third figure that filled my heart with joy was my cardiovascular disease risk score. This is a percentage chance of me having a cardiovascular event, heart attack or a stroke over the next 10 years. More than 20% is considered high, 10 to 20% is moderate, under 10% is low. Mine is 6.87. Now onto the messy side of the report. And we begin with the most contentious bit, BMI. BMI stands for Body Mass Index. BMI was first calculated back in the 1830s by a Belgian. Nope, not Hercule Poirot, because he was from the 1930s and not fucking real. So why the controversy? Because BMI doesn't take into a bunch of factors like muscle mass and lifestyle. Take the obvious one, body composition. Someone who is my height and 176 pounds and has never been in a gym is gonna have a very different body makeup to someone like me who competed in a bodybuilding competition 
also had 176 pounds. But you know, bodybuilders, they're a small subsector of a tiny group of animals who think it's a good idea to spend half their life humping iron and eating egg whites for breakfast, or as I call them, idiots. But there are wider implications of the limitations of BMI. This is research published by the NIH in the US. It shows that different racial groups have a different level of risk for getting diabetes at the same BMI. So what do you think my BMI is? <laughs> yeah, sky high, 36.1 to be precise. And as you can see from the chart, I've rummed through the limit for overweight and plonked myself firmly in the obese category. Come on. But there are two serious implications for BMI that I want you to consider. I have a very high value life insurance policy in my name. I want Karen to be financially sorted forever if I drop dead, even when she is playing bedroom Olympics with the next guy that comes along. I've told her, if I go first, she needs to be internet dating before my body goes cold. But just to be safe, I have a professional taste of former food and I'm working my bollocks off to be worth more alive than dead. I'm just saying, every day is a race for survival. Getting that life insurance was a bloody nightmare. I went to the docks with a slight dizziness 10 years before I applied for it. It went undiagnosed and I was fine a few days later, so I never went back. But having just that on my doctor's notes meant that after applying for life insurance, it took over a year to get accepted. Even though on every other level, I was as fit as a racehorse on Red Bull. Looking at my current health check results, I am BMI obese, but the chance of me having a cardiovascular event is low. Now, don't get me wrong. It was the right thing to go for this health check. I wanted the results for me. I wanted it for Karen, for the kids and family. And I wanted it you know, for this channel. But by doing so, if any red flags get raised, it could have a knock-on effect. Like when I got my <laughs> bollocks bashed. I had a vasectomy 20 years ago. And because it was slightly more complicated than just getting my swimmers closed off at the gate, I needed a general anaesthetic. At the time, one of the criteria for going under a general was having a BMI of 40 or less. Now, I started this transformation journey 10 weeks ago with a BMI of 41.6. Going off the criteria back then, if I'd needed this surgery three months ago, they wouldn't have done it, even though I was exercising hard with weights and doing CV. And while I'm on a roll, think of this. In this picture, I am 80 kilos with a body fat percentage of less than 10%. That gives me a BMI of 27. Yet according to the chart that my doctor sent to me this week, I am overweight. Where doctor, where? The next issue isn't on the sheet, but was mentioned to me in the call from the surgery. It's also potentially much more serious. I've got a liver issue. The lady didn't tell me what it was other than it wasn't urgent, but the doctor did need to speak to me. And I'm not sure how I feel about it, to be honest. I'm not a nervous person, but my liver and I do have a bit of history. I drank very heavily in my 20s. Then I met the mother of my eldest two kids and she said I was a proper dick when I was pissed. So I just stopped drinking instantly, completely. A few years after that, I was getting a scan for something it was a young lad doing it. And he stopped really suddenly and just said, you need to stop drinking. And I said, I already have. And he was like, what? He then went on to say that there was some kind of issue with my liver. And to be honest, never followed it up. So the thing is now of all the things that could concern me, having a dodgy liver is kind of up there. I've been on the old interweb and looked at liver issues and I don't have any of the obvious symptoms. I've cleaned up my diet amazingly over the last 12 weeks. And I am signed up to the fact that this will now be a lifelong thing. I want the weight off. I want to keep it off. And I want to enjoy better health for the rest of my life. And I am prepared to sacrifice the stuff that would affect my liver, like fatty foods and alcohol to achieve it. But I do know that livers repair very slowly. So I am apprehensive about the call. And I will tell you what the doc says in a future video. But all in, you know, I was pretty happy with the health check. Apart from one thing, being the NHS, it felt very minimal. I didn't get any information about blood sugar, nothing about testosterone levels, and I didn't get the finger up the arse. Very disappointed, very disappointed. I've only ever had one prostate check and that was over 10 years ago. So I'm gonna lose the next 35 pounds to hit my target, 70 pounds in five months. 
then start investigating some private health clinics where we can go in a little bit deeper. I'll see you later.